All right, so today is August 15th, 2021, and we're going to continue our discussion on the Desiderata Extinction Nadi. And it looks like our agenda today is to have a recorded debrief of our conversations with Jordy Aitken and uh, Darren Allen, and uh, also Hugh's upcoming meeting with Alti. Um, yeah, so. I think uh, today we're having some connection issues, so we'll just try to um, see how we can get this going. All right. Uh, Hugh, do you want to start it off? How's your connection there? It sucks, but uh, I'll, I'll just do it in like 30 second increments. <laughs> so, okay, so let's, um, I kind of got Darren fresh in my mind, and I think Jordy applies the same thing. So just in case anybody wasn't on and we didn't record them. So we didn't record Jordy because uh, that was a technical issue. And I kind of worth queuing on on this one. Uh, there's no such thing as a technical issue. I think basically a bit woo woo. And <laughs> if we didn't record it, there's, there's, there's no accidents as they say in QAnon. So the, the basically the beast is, is out there. And so uh, the reason why we didn't record with Darren is because he didn't want that. He didn't want us to record it. And, and I thought that already was a little bit funny, but possible. But anyway, okay. So what happened on both calls were they were not good. They were basically learning <laughs> experiences. And the, I really dropped the ball mostly. It was mostly me. So let's go through the Darren one. So. If you went on the call, what happened was this is the way I remember it. So tell me if. I... Yeah, we're dealing with connection issues. Um, yeah, please bear with us in this video, guys. It's something really bizarre. I've been. Okay, so yeah, this is how I remember it. So yeah, I stepped on landmine. And after a landmine, and the, the, the for one of the landmines was cults. I, I shouldn't have mentioned cults, um, but uh, that went down pretty badly, which is kind of strange because he's uh, Darren said that one of his influences was, uh, you know, John DeRota, uh, uh, and that guy's a straight up cult leader. He's uh, basically got the, the staring cult, is what they call it. Uh, Canadian guy. So that was kind of weird. But anyway, uh, he he was kind of touchy. And uh, yeah, um, but I didn't establish a rapport with him. And he, he was kind of a abrasive. Um, so it was, uh, the, let's start off from the low point of the call. So the, the low point of the call was I mentioned something about uh, strategy, so gaming, ARGs, that didn't go well. Was, the language problem, again, it was the thing like, oh, I don't do video games. And it's not a fucking video game, okay? <laughs> An ARG is not a video game, damn it. Uh, so, so then um, we got to this place where I said something that made him say, oh, so then So he, yeah, he, he, he seems to be like value himself as Mr. Truth. And so, you know, he's um, Mr. Radical Truth Teller. And so we got to this point where the low point of the call, where he said, well, does that mean you're lying? And I said, yes. I said, but basically, that's, that's what we're doing. We're lying. Um, everybody else on the course kind of stepped in and <laughs> lied. <laughs> so I was the only one telling the truth. And that's important because what, what I was saying, I was very disappointed in, uh, and particularly at that point, because what I was doing was Epimenides paradox, right? It's the liar's paradox. I'm, I'm being absolutely honest with him. If I was a liar, then I would tell him, no, 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 we're not lying. We're telling the truth. I said the absolute truth. And anybody of his caliber should have noticed the Epimenides paradox straight away and, and said, oh, well, I'm glad you, you're honest about that or something. But he didn't get that. 
he he was turned off and he said you know well um you know i don't think i'm your guy uh, <laughs> and at that point he was about to drop off the call um So at that point, then, then Ryan stepped in and kind of saved the day. And I, my opinion of Darren went down a few notches even more then, because what the way Ryan saved it was he said, he basically did a witnessing thing. So from the heart, witnessing thing, saying why he was involved. And it worked, uh, he recovered. And then he flattered Darren and then Darren basically came back as much as he'd ever come back um, based on the flattery, which I thought was fucking awful. But okay, so what I'm going to propose is we start from that low point and, and that thing where he said, you know, I don't think I'm your guy. And so I woke up at two in the morning thinking, what would make him say, okay, I'm your guy. <laughs> and instead of saying, hey, I'm not your guy, he would say, whoa i'm your guy okay now i have a definite idea about the circumstances under which you would say that and so but i'll tell you afterwards but i want to hear what you guys think and hear your answers to say what would make him say i am your guy instead of i'm not your guy and um, i'm going to propose another thing and that since this is kind of a a brace of working surface to work from I think it's a good opportunity to just go to the Desiderato Extinction ID. And let's try and work through this according to the Desiderato. So we, we don't, now is a good time to exercise the des Desiderato and make it real because it's a kind of point of adversity. So if you have the bandwidth, Man, this is really bad. So what I was saying was, if you can go to the the Sirius.Institute website and just open the drop down menu and look at the Desert Writer, and just as an exercise, let's try and keep ourselves honest to the Desert Writer, um, because I uh, I think we really want to be true to ourselves, right? <laughs> and so uh, this is this is a good opportunity to to do a bit of serious work. So okay, so the questions to the floor. And that's like, before I give my interpretation of what would make him say, I am your guy, I'm definitely your guy. I mean, I, I want to hear what other people would think would, would fit the bill to make him say that. Could it be, could it? So close, no cigar. So the machine hates us. I it might, must I might, I, I might have the bandwidth because I could open, open the Desiderata. Um, but I'm stumped. Uh, anyone else have a, a faint idea? <laughs> I'll, I'll need to think on this. I think Sophie's Sophie was going to say something. Sophie, you're back. No, Sorry. I was just thinking, are we getting disconnected because there's there's uh, too many more people than usual on the platform? Would that have anything to do with it? I don't know. It's so bizarre. Like everything is, uh, I, I'm getting, uh, I've been disconnected about 10 times and I think more people too. Are you in the same thing? It might be my bandwidth, I think, because I think Mike's okay, at least. Yeah, I'm still on. You didn't get cut off, Mike? No. And I don't know why I'm getting cut off, because it's just, I don't know. But, I don't, I don't know, I'm trying to turn off the video, see if that helps. If There's someone else in the messages saying, 
there's three or four people who've got the same problem. Yeah, it might be the platform, but oh, Sophie's gone. Let, let's just try and beat our way through it and just hope it gets better somewhere sometime during the call. Uh, okay. Just, just, just be patient. Hey, Hugh, this is uh, Mr. Mackey. Say, I uh, I think Darren seemed like someone who had sort of a vision of himself as a truth teller. He had this sort of ego that was entrenched in uh, his idea of making great art, sort of playing the, playing the hero role. I think you're going to have to try to reach him at that level as unsavory as that may be i think it seems to be the way he's conceived of himself whether that's come from being an author kind of an established author for a while or uh or what i think that's where he's at and uh you could maybe reach him at that level and then try to persuade him to your side a little bit more but i yeah he seemed uh, a lot more full of himself than i would have guessed by reading his material. And uh, yeah, I think ego stroking is the way you're gonna have to go if you wanna get him onto your side. Yeah, I think so too. So Sophie, where, you're back. I'm back, I'm using my phone now. I, I'm using my phone. I can't, I don't know how to, to put the sound on. What was on. your, what was your, your suggestion for how to make him do the opposite. Are you talking to me? Yeah, I thought you were going to say something about it. About Darren or about the, the platform? No, no, the, the thing was to say, you know, he said, like, I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm your guy. What, yeah. what do you think would have, if we played it, to, what do you think I, I, how we should have played it to make him say, I'm, I'm definitely your guy? <laughs> yeah, but listen, you see, it is because I think it was not brought at the right time. Because it was very shortly after we started exchanging a few things. And, and uh, you know, it was like you present, you said, you said, oh, this is more like a j job interview, you know. And I think he felt cornered. And it, and it started the, the whole talk in, in a wrong kind of way. And I think... We, as we said at the end of the meeting, maybe we should have talked about ourselves a bit more and and maybe brought it on more. I think you might we might have been a bit too fast. I think. Yeah, no, we were all of those, but I, I'm not sure we would have got there even if if we didn't do well, all did of you, that. I don't did think. You read, did you read his email that he sent me? Because he, he sent me an email today. I yeah. posted it on the thing. And you see, I think he's very much, um, he wants to be helped more than help, helping us. Like he, he wants, he wants us to basically help him do his projects. And I, I mean, I, I just, uh, I don't know. Uh, if you want him to say, yes, I'm your guy, we'd have to know him much better. I think he's a, he's a guy who, you know, he's, he's, he's got big fortress around him and uh, he'd want to know us a bit more. Maybe that's when he could click, but I don't think it can happen fast with that type of fellow. Oh, I think I see there's a dis. Yeah, I read that email and there is a disconnect. He made a separation between, okay, this is your project and here's my project. I'm not sure if I'm, he, this, this is how I interpret that email. I'm not sure if I'll be interested in what you guys are doing, but if, if you are, if you're interested in what I'm doing, here's this, this and that. But I mean, I thought Hugh, maybe we didn't make it clear that, you know, it's actually one, uh, it's hard to say, but his project is our project in a way. I mean, we're, we're actually, it's a collaborative project. I mean, it's kind of like after watching the Meow Wolf origin story and how um, the Institute did their ARG and, um, you know, Jeff Hall, I, I, I'm in that mindset you know their mindset is they're very collaborative and they don't seek one person to do everything i mean jeff hall is you can say he's a mastermind but he's not he's not doing all the work 
right? He's there, he has other people contributing to the project and they have their own talents and expertise. And um, I a very, very individual agenda. Um, and uh, it's very much about him. So I don't know to get to tell him. I mean, yeah, you could say, okay, um, here's uh, plenty of money and uh, you can you can include your project into ours. But that then maybe that would say, okay, then he'd say, but I don't see him working as a, in, a, in a team. I, I, I don't think so. So what, any other take on it? Anybody others got some ideas? I mean, I, I think, I think you know, we got the same result from Jordi, some respects from Alison. So I think we're going to have to work out how to make <laughs> these guys work. Uh, you know, how are we going to integrate them? Because I think they all like this, really. Um, so yeah, from, we... from my point, I, I've got to reveal personally that, mm. you know, this, this happens when, whenever I've met a famous person, this this is how it goes down. It never fucking works. And the reason is And the reason is that it's always the same is that the famous people want you to kowtow. And I, I never do. I always refuse. And the reactions have been, I can tell you some fucking stories, the reactions are visceral. The hatred of a famous person that you won't count down to is, is unbelievable. But th this is a, a watered down version of that, is, is that I, I clearly am not reverential. And, uh, and so basically that, that is the problem here. But I've, I've got a solution. If, does anybody want to weigh in with any ideas before I weigh in with mine? Because I'm not sure people are going to like what I have to say, <laughs> but I'm damn sure it'll work. And um, yeah, yeah, we've got to see I, if I, you guys I, agree. I, you want to I have one more thing to, to add. Is it, is it a good idea, like what we did with Alison, Jordi, and, um, and uh, Darren, it, to introduce straight away Extinction Rebellion, Faulty, Cult, and you know the arg isn't it better to start to 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 get to know these people and include them in in a, in a in a more devious way or a more not devious but you know what i mean and then get to you know because I, I i think that's what puts them off everybody reacted the that's same. kind of where i'm going to that's the, the kind of get so so yeah it's it's basically we're gonna. I don't know where this fits in with the desert rider, but we're just gonna have to lie. And I, this is this is my plan. And I, I feel like I have to sell it to you guys. Um, <laughs> okay. First off, let me tell you something about cults, right? That, so I'll tell you some really secret things about cults that you you may not agree with, but they absolutely dink them. I'm giving you the keys to the castle here. I'm it's I'm giving you the secrets to making nuclear weapons. I'm almost you know, scared to put this on the internet. But uh, okay, I'm going to tell you a few secret things about cults. The, the, the very first one is that although everybody kicks up a big fuss and about cults and says, you know, oh, they don't like cults and they're really put off by cults, it's, it's horseshit. Nobody is put off by a cult. What really puts people off is they not the cult leader. That's the thing that's really setting them up. It's envy of the cult leader. I don't know anybody that's not into cults if they are the cult leader. Everybody wants to be the fucking cult leader. And that's the trouble that people have with cults, is they don't like other person, somebody like Faulty, having all the control and the power. And that's really what's eating them up. Not the It's not the principle, it's not the cult, it's what they're reacting to, the, to is, the, is the fact that they have con somebody else has control and power and status and, and it's, it's basically envy. So, you know, show me anybody that's, you know, concerned about a family member in a cult and they want them, you know, an intervention and pulled out and stuff. 
And I'll show you somebody that has a miniature little cult in control of a family or a unit where they are the cult leader and they have competition from another cult leader. And that's really what's going on in a cult and particularly in hauling people out. So once you, once you know that, then it's it's damn simple. If you, I, I think we should do this experiment to just see if I'm right. But I'm absolutely convinced that if you went to someone like you know, Darren or Jordy. Now, now understand, Jordy is a cult leader. He he is a personal developer. If you see him in the Institute movie, he is a cult leader. He he is doing cult leader things and personal development things. He in in Bright Axiom, he's also acting a cult leader. He is a cult leader, and I think the same is true with Darren. Is but the the way Darren, I think a number of people nailed it. Darren is on this this trip that is pure pure macro macchio. What it, what it is 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 that it's kind of like this kaku kakuya thing. So it's um uh, I put a story up on on Reddit about this, but it's this idea that you can work on yourself and perfect yourself and become a Bach or a genius or something like you know you can polish yourself so so that eventually. You, you just appear and the words you say or the things you do or the art you do, it just... So everything you do, once you've polished yourself and perfected yourself, it just oozes this aura that everybody, you know, will be knocked over by your great wisdom and your fucking perfection and you know zen will flow from you and everybody will be knocked out it's basically why i mentioned kakuya is because uh, it's a good example of of this horseshit story because according to zen basically kakuya brought um zen to to japan and he did it because he spent years and years studying in china this is the myth the zen myth and then you know the emperor of japan wants to know, he hears about him in China and wants to know, he calls him back to Japan to come and, you know, tell him, uh, you know, what he's learned. And so Kukuya comes back and he just plays one note on a flute and takes a bow and nobody hears from him again. And the whole of Japan is absolutely slewed and that's how Zen gets to Japan. It's horse shit. It's horse shit from top to bottom. That's not the way the fucking world works. And that's what I said on the call, that that's why he didn't like it. I mentioned Yo-Yo Ma and, and how I, I was wrong. It wasn't Yo-Yo Ma. It was um, Robert, uh, Robert Bell, I think it was. A, a, but basically, uh, Bell played this $3 million Stradivarius in the tube in Montreal. And no one gave him any time at all. And eventually he earned $32 for working for a day. Now, if you go and see Bell in a concert, you will pay through the yin yang to go and see him. And here these guys got a free concert. And guess what? Nobody stopped to listen. The reason why? Nobody knows. Nobody knows he's a brilliant thing. They can't hear it in the fucking music. And I said that to Darren and he didn't like it because I hit the nail on the head. I intuitively got where he was going. But it's horseshit. You're putting pearls before swine. I mean, I, in my own work, I've chucked out pearl, pearls there, like just that spreadsheet where the you know Rochambeau thing and the frames. There is so much in that. It's such a pearl that you can you, it can overthrow decision making whole fields in science basically you know, over whole overthrow liberal liberal fields uh, in in the liberal sciences it's 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 that powerful and nobody gives a shit and they shouldn't because it's it's pearls before swine i'm not saying you guys are swine but that's not the way the world works nobody knows the the truth there is no verbalized truth so this is the second thing So the, this is the second thing about cults that nobody wants to hear is there is no transmission. There is no low 
Logos. There is no words or revelation that you can get from an individual. There's no art you can see or book you can read that will transform you. It does not work that way. So the people don't want to hear that. They want to hear that there's some, you know, somebody has the answer and they can tell them in words. Now, it's it's there is some secret knowledge and stuff to transfer, but it cannot be transferred in words. That that idea is pure fucking makya. It's pure fucking makya, and it's it's very prevalent. You come across it quite a lot. Okay, but anyway, so if uh, the 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 other thing and the third thing about cults that I want to tell you that's kind of secret and <laughs> nobody likes this is there is nothing special about the cult leader. Nothing. Now, people don't believe you. They think geniuses and Einsteins and this, they ha we have this conceptual myth. It's bullshit. You, you can get a fucking ham sandwich and replace Jesus with it. It's basically what made Jesus is nothing to do with himself. Basically, any reasonably intelligent guy can do, can do Jesus. The secret is that the crowd, the, the, the audience, the followers make the cult leader. Jesus was made because, and I'll tell you the third thing, which I also put up there, the fourth thing, in fact, which I also put up on Reddit, is it's to do with the second follower. So it's an endorsement. The reason... The reason why people buy tickets and go to a concert to see Bell and pay a fortune is not because they they uh, going to hear this wonderful music. They don't know what wonderful music is. You could do a, a, a you know a correlation experiment, and what you could do is get a reasonably good and proficient uh, violinist and basically put him up as a fake Bell on stage. And I'll tell you, not a single person would ask for their money back. They wouldn't fucking know. The reason why they go to this concert to watch Bell is because somebody who's, who's basically a critic or an expert that they kind of respect has told them that he's the best in the world. And that's why they go. They can't tell or judge for shit. And that's how it works with the world. Is You could tell anybody anything. Look at the in bright axiom. You can tell people horse shit. Look, look at ba basically this, you know, John Dorator guy. Horseshit, pure horseshit. People, it, it, he's just doing a uh, being there, you know, like, um, uh, yeah, you know, Peter Sellers. He's, he, he's just doing Peter Sellers. People project what they want. He, there's nothing exceptional about Hitler or Einstein. You would have never heard of Einstein if it wasn't for Ernest Mach. Ernest Mach was famous and well respected. And Ernest Mark said, oh, you've got to listen to this guy called Einstein. All, everybody, all. All the physicists of that time said, like, we don't see anything. This guy, Einstein, he's an ass. But if Mark thinks so, then he is. And that's why you've heard of Einstein. The only reason you've heard of Jesus Christ is because of John the Baptist. John the Baptist was basically a well-respected guy. He didn't have anything in the game. And so they could, you know, they see like, oh, this guy lives on nettles. So he's not trying to take our money. We can trust him. And he's damn sure about himself that the Messiah is coming. When Jesus comes, then John the Baptist said, this is the Messiah. That's the only fucking reason that basically the Christian cult exists. If John the Baptist had have said at that moment, now nah, this guy's a twat, everybody, every fucking person in Judea would have said, yeah, we fucking knew that. He's a fucking twat, this Jesus person. It was only when John the Baptist said it that suddenly he became Christ. So John the Baptist turned him into Christ. And that's how it is. You can get a fucking hand sandwich and make them into the Messiah. In fact, if you don't believe me, I can prove it to you because it's done routinely by the Dalai Lama. See, what I'll tell you the secret of what's happening with the Dalai Lama and those Zen guys. What they do is, there's no fucking reincarnation. Guys, get over it. You know, the, the, the world lives. We don't. There's no such thing as a soul. We're just parts, offshoots of the world. When we die, we're fucking dead. Our kids and other people and living organisms live on. 
There's no transmigration of individual souls. It's a fucking lie. And if you, if you don't believe me, we can spend some time on this and I will prove it. Prove it. Not tell you my opinion. I'll prove it to you. But this is what the guys are doing with the Dalai Lama. They get any fucking kid. Hugh. Hugh, they, Hugh, you should try your phone because I, I have not been disconnected since I'm on the phone because it seems like I, it's I'm not... on my phone. I tried, I tried my, I tried my base station. I tried my, my, and that was worse. So I'm, I'm trying to do the phone, but sorry oh. about this. But anyway, right. I'm just going to try battle through it. But yeah, so, so what they do is they get any kid if they hear something oh there's an unusual kid or a nice kid or something they go and have a look at him and they set out a big mat and they put out all these things and they say can he identify the previous dalai lama's personal items and then basically the you know little toddler sits on the mat there and they look at what the toddler's interested in here's how the fucking trick works the dalai lama the previous dalai lama's personal goods are plain they fucking ordinary. They're an ordinary boring comb. They're an ordinary boring cup. An ordinary boring pair of hands. And what they do is they put a shiny one full of jewels. If the little cunt reaches for the shiny cup full of jewels, he's not eligible to. So, so if this little fuck reaches for the jewel cup. He's not fit to be the Dalai Lama because when he gets to power, he's going to be fucking Stalin or some, you know, Lucretius or basically Nero. So they, they can tell at four years old that this kid is not interested in shiny objects and stuff like that. And so that's the trick. But what they're doing is they're getting any kid. The next Dalai Lama that they get is like, it's, it's just any freaking kid. It's nobody. And so people don't want to hear that. They want there to be exceptionalism. They want there to be a messiah. They want somebody on it. And they want an idol. So you can, you can, anybody can give it to them. Just a reasonably good actor. If you don't believe me, you'll see it. I'm, you know, Lionel Schnell, Snell and um, you know, Ramsey Dukes and that. He understands this just as well as I do. And we will show it to you. We've done it. I've done it. So basically, this, it's all to do with priming. So you can prime anybody, and basically any grifter knows this. You prime anybody for the con. You know, it's basically, I'll tell you how all these guys work. And basically, they always do it with priming, and then they name all the roles. And you can do it with a cult like the Christian cult. You can do it with any fucking thing. But as long as you have the second follower that endorses it, and people trust them, then you're off to the Okay, so the, there's just one more thing to, to round off on these four points is that people are vicious. We're talking now about the, the alien cortex. And what they are doing is vicious. They are making a scapegoat out of that cult leader. They will elevate him, pray to him, and put him up on a fucking cross. They're basically using him as a sacrificial lamb. It's the alien cortex sacrificing Jesus for its death to basically forestall its death. It's trying to avoid death. It's avoidance behavior. And that's what's going on in a cult. So if, you're, if you step forward as a cult leader and get suckered into this, like everybody does from Hitler to you name it, that basically they, they think that, well, they know that they're not leading. They know that the crowd is leading. They know that all the participants and the audience is in charge. But they play along to give them what they want. And they think they're riding the horse, but what that what that they, that dragon right will turn around. It's not a horse; it's a dragon. That dragon will turn around and make a sacrificial lamb out of them. It demands the sacrifice. That is what the passion is, and that's what the sacrament is. And so, anybody that walks into that role, like maybe faulty, but I've told him, I've told him outright, and he knows what he's getting into. Uh, basically, that is the role. It's Gandhi, Martin Luther King, they all playing a version of this role. And it works out where the crowd sacrifices you. 
This game has to fucking end. It is the game of the ages, and this is how the alien cortex keeps going. It's the vicious game, and we've got to end it. Okay, now having said all that, how does it relate to all these fucking prima donnas? It's fucking easy. If you want Darren. and Geordie on board and even Alison and, and I think we do <laughs> it's fucking easy you just go to them and you say Darren we've seen the light you know we we, we absolutely the minute we saw your reaction about faulty we knew we were wrong this is who we are Darren this is our authentic selves we are a bunch of seekers we are a bunch of guys who want a cult leader and we've looked at your work we've seen that you have it you have the gem in your hands and we can see it. So we're here to serve you and we want you to be our cult leader. And that's it. He will say, I'm your guy <laughs> in one way or another while saving face. They will all say it. Okay, so that's my proposal. Now, the, the trouble is we've already sold this position. <laughs> and so what we're doing in effect is the producers. We're basically telling everybody that you are, the, it's all about you. It's not our project. We're here to get you money, Darren. We're here to bring your work to fruition. You, you are the Messiah. It's basically Monty Python fucking the life of Brian. It's like, follow the God, follow the Son. It's like, you, know, you are our bride. And so basically all these guys, All these guys will take the bait. They're all narcissists. And so then basically, well, you think, well, well, we can't sell them all that, you know, the pole position. We can't all sell them the lead role in the show. And I say, no, we can. Because think it through. If we sell the lead role to all these fucking hookers, basically, then they're in a spot. Because they get shown up at some point. They're gonna, there's going to be friction. Is All these guys are going to play each other off. They're going to play off each other. And But look at it. They get exposed. If they say I have a tissy fit and go, you know, you, you I was sold a bill of goods. You you said that I was the, the leader and I was the cult leader. And say, well, well, if you are, then you'll shine. But obviously you're not the leader if you have a pissy fit and say, uh, you know, walk off like a prima donna. So they caught. Basically, their ego is caught in a vice. So that's what I'm going to propose, is that we, we basically take these guys' scalps one by one, and we, we sucker them. Now, tell me if I violated any of the desiderata, but I think that we've got to end this fucking game of the ages. The people here I, on I, this call who understand saying. have got to end this fucking sick game. And this is how you do it. We've got to catch this monkey and fucking kill it. So what do you guys say? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. I understand it intuitively. I understand what you're saying. So I'm I'm a hundred percent behind you for that. And yeah. be the second follower. Oh, I, got one. <laughs> I mean, just thinking about it logically, I I don't see any other way. I mean, if if we try to pander to him, it's it's just going to be a cat and mouse game. This is this seems like it's a definite it's a definite action. Yeah, he's either going to go do it or not, and we'll know definitely. There's no um, chase anymore. This is this is it. Yeah. Yeah. I think we, we, we could take them, like you said, one by one and say, we've been thinking, really, and what you said, we are seekers. You have, you've kind of, you've inspired us, and I think we need to put you in charge, and, you know, and that sort of thing. And, and, yeah, we, yeah. We, but more than that, we, we're going to, you know, maybe you're not completely polished yet, but we're going to devote our lives to getting you the money, the resources. We've seen the fucking Messiah that you are. And we're going to dedicate ourselves to bringing you into the light. And I tell you that basically, 
you will catch this demon. This this demon is a class A demon, if I know my R's go Goetia right. <laughs> but this demon we're fighting is a, is a class A demon. It's actually a more comfortable place to be for us. Well, well, if you've got if you've got loads of leaders, you've got no leader. But but Mike, I, I absolutely agree. In, in my experience, that that what these guys who who on the show basically they think they're better than everybody else, and uh, they've done a bit of work. They've been through a few retreats. They think they're a lot smarter than everybody else. And so the what they want you to do. This is the problem I have with famous people is they want you to pander to them they want they they're basically hookers they're basically scarlet o'hara in gone with the wind now you tell me who basically gets to screw scarlet o'hara is it all you know the the guys if you remember the gone with the wind is it like you know oh charles will you go and fill my drink Love to fill your drink, and it's like, James, did I tell you, you know, what wonderful eyes you've got? And you tell me, well, James and basically Charles, are they going to screw Scarlet? Of course not. It's basically the the breath character, right? He he's gonna look. You can waste a lot of the the time playing these this guy's game, right? So if if you play this game and and you know romance them and stuff. You can waste a lot of time, and and at the end of the day, we we kind of it puts us in a bit of a spot, right? We we should try and triage and get through these things quickly, because because if we can if we pander to them, they'll string us along forever. It's it's basically look. I'll give you another example just to put it in harshest terms and most visceral and gut punching terms that I can. You see, people's instincts in, in this, we're all liars, right? The society demands that we lie. And so what people tend to do when put in the spot that we were with, with Darren, as you saw it, with, with, we, we did exactly what the normal thing is. And so it's, you know, we, we try and say, no, it's not what you think. And we try and sell and we try and lie and stuff like that. And it's like, and they know exactly what we're doing and they want it that way. They want to be in charge. They want us to see us basically jumping through hoops for them. Now, the chances of you actually coming through and winning the, the damsel that way are low. And it puts us in a spot because we, we essentially we become like a, a tranny trying to pick up a guy that, uh, you know, if you're a tranny and you try to pick up a guy you really like in a bar, you've got a real problem because you've got, you know, you really like the guy and you really want him. But you've got a little problem because some point you're going to have to come out with your secret. And so if you do what everybody normally thinks. So most people, according to the chess playing little alien cortex, what they normally do is say, well, I'll establish a rapport. And basically, you know, when we have trust and then basically you know we've established this thing of trust then i'll reveal my secret that i'm actually a tranny well there's a 50 50 chance you get a well planted you know smack in the face because you haven't been honest in all that time if in that position you're far better off to just if there's some guy at the bar that you like you can probably save yourself both a lot of time and aggravation if you walk over to the guy and say you know i really fancy you and basically, I'll give you a thousand bucks if you fuck me up the ass. I'm a tranny. You you probably will pull it off. <laughs> I don't think you've got much hope in romancing and building rapport and being friendly and stuff. It just doesn't work. That That is the game that basically these people want to play. And if you play it, you're a sucker. So, that, so that's my theory on it. Now, you tell me. Have I violated any of the desiderata and basically am I batshit crazy to, to think this way? And do you think you want to bail on this? But I think this is how it works. This is how life works.
Did everyone drop off? No, no, I'm, I'm we're there. I'm just thinking, but I, I, I've told you, I, I, I don't see any other way. Um, I think it. I, I've thought that's what I told you before. You exposed this is, um, we have to use a form of deceit and uh, and the. That, oh, it's amazing what you've said. Actually, I have to even think about it even more. It's, it's a yeah. I I I'm behind you for that. Oh, do you mind saying that again, Sophie? I, I dropped. No, I I said that I'm I'm a hundred percent behind you for that because I felt that we need to go through a form of deceit uh, because these people we've come up front. We've done what you said. We've tried to present to Alison to Jordi according to their personalities, you know, we, we need to go completely a different way. And I think the one you offer is the only option we have left. Yeah, you see the look, if we had more time and different circumstances, maybe something different. But the way I see it is everybody, the people that we're trying to reach, they kind of like domesticated chimps in a lab, saying like Kevin McCann's lab. And, you know, the truth is, they don't want liberation. You could leave the freaking door open and they wouldn't leave their cages. They're scared of the outside. They're scared of freedom. They're scared of liberation. So they will stay being tortured by... And, and they won't leave. So you can always make some liberal argument that, about free choice and everything like that. But I think this is the situation we're in, is the fucking lab is on fire. So you cannot reason with these chimps and say, no, there's a fire, you have to get out. Most of them would like to, prefer to die in the fire rather than go out into a world they don't know. Most of them would choose dying in a fire before they chose freedom. So I think basically we're in a position where you have to say to the chimp, Look, I, I'm not going to reason with you. I'm not going to tell you how wonderful it is outside. I'm not going to say how bad it is burning in a fire. What you've got to say to them is, hey, look at this. I found some fucking awesome bananas, piles of them, rooms of them. You can smell them. Let me describe them. You elaborate on the bananas and, say, and they say, we're in. Where are they? Well, you have to get a shovel and dig your way out of here because they're on the other side of that wall. But they are fucking awesome and you'll see them when you get there. And when they dig themselves out and they're on the other side of the wall, they and when they dig themselves out and they're on the other side of the wall and they say, you lied to us, where this fucking piles of bananas? And I say, there, out in the wilderness, you've got to go and pick them. And there are tigers out there and there are rivers and mountains and trees, and they're dangerous things and they're friendly things, and there are lots of wonderful bananas, but you have to go and find them, you have to pick them, and you have to avoid the tigers. It's called freedom, and you fucking have it now. I didn't lie to you. There are millions of bananas out there. All I hid from you was the fact that you were basically going to have to earn them, and that's it. That's the job we're doing. That's how we liberate people. That's the way I see it. I mean, somebody say something else <laughs> if you don't agree. Hugh, I think that's good, but what does that look like in practice? These people like Darren seem like very literal-minded folks. They take everything you say literally, and I, I know you speak oftentimes very figuratively, and I think people on this call and stuff understand that because they've spent a lot of time listening to you. But if you were to say something like this, I can't help but feel he would he would take it in a different way. You'd have to sort of think about how to phrase it before you go into the fray. What would what would this proposition look like to someone who sort of thinks linearly, thinks literally? A good question. So the first answer is, not me. I'm not the person to do it because I, I also am too intellectual. So the first rule in this situation I would suggest is Churchill FM. So in, 
in plain language, basically, it's a honey trap. So Sophie already has a rapport with him. So basically, it, it would normally be a female role. So it, it would be a mistake for, for me to, to buddy up to him. It just wouldn't, wouldn't seem right. Now, the opposite might be, be true for somebody like Alison. Right? I would say that it should be a male role to try and sweet talk and romance Alison. But in, in general, I think it would be a, a big mistake if you, if you ignored gender roles in this kind of thing. Because it, it is saying something completely different if, if a, a man approaches you and praises you and, or, or a woman does. So if we go to him and say straight up, you know, you are the cult leader we are thinking of and we, we want to make um, your work, we want to you know, bring it out and shine it forth into the world. It can't come from a male, it has to come from a female, assuming that he's straight, which he, he is, I think. I think he's married. <laughs> but, yeah. so, yeah, part of the reason why we're so in ineffective all on the left and stuff is, is because we've conspired to make all the, this bullshit story that, you know, there's no such thing as gender roles and stuff like that. It's not, it's not really true. They definitely are, and you can see it quite plainly in this this case. So, but yeah. So what I'm suggesting is that that Sophie takes takes the lead and expresses it in the most adoring terms. Um, And I, I think that you'll be embarrassed to find that there are almost no limits to how flattering you can be. <laughs> so, you know, basically, basically you could never go over the top and it, it might surprise you if you've never done this, but you know, how bottomless narcissism is, is, is something to behold. It's, yeah. it's just kind of rather stomach yeah. churning, but it, it's, it's the human condition and, <laughs> well, and well, every, I, I, every human is valuable. You see, I I managed I managed to to get him uh, for the interview because I I I did a bit that in the email I sent him about me, like I was you know, um, and and when he was saying no to you and Mike, I think, and he said yes to me. So I, I think he's got this uh, soft spot with women too. So that that could be, and I, I I'm a good bit older than him, so I think there could be a difference. Yeah, but I I would absolutely need to have a very good. Um, screenplay um because i mean you know i'm not that good at exp we need to have a really good plan for him you know we need to collaborate all of us and i, I would be happy to take that role but um and, and inspired but i i'm going to need to do that with with you all like you know we we'll back you up but i feel like we have to be careful that we don't that the the males don't pollute your natural instincts. So the, the, so I would say that females on the course should should help you out more than males. We, we'll sour the dish. Okay, okay. And, and I, what about Alison? And, and the opposite. So I think we, yeah, we must think carefully about it. So, so, so just before Alison, though, I'd talk Geordie. Um, so Mike is talking to Geordie, right? Yeah, I'm still in communication with him. Yeah, and I, I think that's you know a positive symbol and positive. You know, you're talking positive pole and positive pole there too. I, I would switch it out with with a female if somebody would would basically be the the negative anode. So basically, we need an anode and a cathode. And I think what we've got is two anodes <laughs> on that relationship. So if, if somebody else will step forward and be the, the cathode to to Geordie, so basically a yeah. woman. Or and to Spencer, perhaps, because he's he's in close communication with with Jeff. And he did share your, um, your, your message, but I haven't heard back. So maybe it could be, yeah. It could be souring on us, be, yeah. Yeah, so if you take on Jordy, it would be good to just take on the whole 
group um the jejun yeah crew yeah if, if anyone wants to and I, i'd be happy and to help yeah. Yeah. or you know yeah support the whole aim way. is the whole aim is to the, the whole aim as i see it is to get to jeff hall because i You know, I really value his his talent, and I think it's exactly the same soul. Is I think you know he again, he's a cult leader, and so we have to sell him on on the same gap. But you, you see, I it's it's not uh, all that dishonest. You know, I, I just had something just flashed in my mind that that if you know, just this image flashed in my mind of 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 basically Jeff Hull coming to me one day and saying, you bloody bastard, you told me that I was basically, this was all about me and my work and stuff like that. And, you know, I, I can easily imagine myself not being glib and actually saying, you know, Jeff, it is, it is all about your work. We're all doing the same work and you are the cult leader. So is everybody. I can, I can really imagine me saying that and meaning it too, which is the dreadful thing. But yeah, so I think that that is the approach for, for the, you know, the latitudes, society and stuff. But again, I think a female must do it. I think we'd need a female for the, for the, the latitude and the Jejun crowd, but I think it would be better if it was female that was um, on the other side of the Atlantic, maybe American. I don't know because I, I've, I don't know who's on our, on our group is female on this. Oh, A is not there. Um, I don't know because I feel I didn't feel. Uh, I, I, I think I would co I could concentrate on Darren as an European. It would be easier. So can we ask for a volunteer, if anybody you know, sees this video or is on this call now, please step forward and take on that role. Mm -hmm. Just uh, extend yourself, put yourself out there. Okay, you can't see because my video is off, but I'm staring really, really hard at you now. Yeah. Um, maybe I can work with A on it. I can pair with some I can't hear you. Oh, well, maybe I can pair with A on this. I could work to I could work with her. Your sound, Your sound is, very, is low. very low. Oh. Can you hear me now? Yeah, a bit, yeah, better. A bit better. Oh, okay. Maybe I can work with A on this. I could pair with her. A? Okay. I think she said her mic, her mic mic's not works not work. Oh, okay. oh okay yeah but anyway there's, anyway, there's a reach out across the aisle or uh or risa were you gonna say something um no but i i said i don't know if you heard me but i can work with a maybe i can work with her Oh, well, I, I, think, I think you've got two avatars, avatars open. Risa, I, th I think you've got two tabs, tabs open. open. You open them twice. twice. 
This is A. Can, can you hear me? Hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, but oh, it's yeah. Really <laughs> going through Risa. Risa's got, Risa's got two got tabs two open. open. <laughs> have two tabs open? What do you mean? I have two bars open or no? I, I can I, see I can fellow see Jitsi. Jitsi. Fellow oh, Jitsi and, and Risa. Risa. I, think, I, think, I think they're I both, think they're you. both you. you. Oh, okay. So how do I remove one? How do I remove um, I think you um, must, have, you two must tabs, have two tabs, don't you? Don't you? Uh, I don't know how I got two tabs. <laughs> Excuse me. I don't know. I don't know how I did that. But do you know how? To, do you know how to remove one of them? Okay. Let me try. Let me try. Click one more. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There you okay, go. There you go. Okay. Are you still on? Still on. I'm, I'm here. Can you hear me? Okay, the, okay I, the, think that, I think that. You still you got a big, still echo, a big for echo for some reason. Can you hear me now? I'm fairly, I'm fairly soft, soft, but we can, but we can hear, you, hear you, yeah. Boy, Boy, the Matrix the is fighting. Uh, Maybe the, Maybe cops, the cops are around. Are around. The, cop. the cop. It it is it is. It is. I mean, I, I, I get pretty woo woo about, about this. But I can work, work with Risa. With Risa. Um, um, I just, I just was, was never, never on the. On the the June, June meeting, meeting or the, or the Spencer, Spencer McCall, McCall or, or Jordy. Jordy. So I don't so know, I don't where, know they're where they're from. coming from. Yeah, if yeah, you can, can send, send your email, email I, can I can forward, forward all my all interactions, my interactions with, them. with them. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I'll do that. I'll, I'll, help, I'll help you a lot. You a lot. Right. Right. I will go later to um, Reddit and send Mike my email or contact him. And Risa also. And who is the main volunteer for Allison? <laughs> uh, I mean, I tried contacting her and I don't know if I can. I think someone else might have to. We might have to reach out to Gary. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I think yes. might fit, you know, I think Gary could fit well into her, her psyche, you know. I don't know really what yeah. sort of college Yeah, I think you could thing. be right. Yeah. Yeah, I think you could be right there. Yeah. So, Gary, when you listen to this, we're talking about you now, so get back to us. <laughs> We have a job for you, a mission, should you choose to accept it. Gary's going to hate us. I know. Well, well okay, so we, okay, so we, we covered we, some we, interesting we, ground. Should we, are there any more questions? <laughs> Is that enough for one evening that we cover the board? I had one more thing was that the that the Stoa guys. Did you see those guys in their video? Only briefly. Yeah, not. I'll have to. Uh, I'll watch it later. Yeah. Yeah, I just. Um, started watching that and I thought they're kind of speaking our language and the dialect of our language. <laughs> so.
So kind of interesting. I I have another question before we go because I posted um, I posted the email that um, that Darren sent me um, on the little group there. Uh, I did a little group on Reddit in the chat uh, called Darren. But if the people are not in it, uh, he says in the second part. Well, of course he says I'm uh, too much. Um, as I said, if there's something you want from me, let me know what it is and I'll make a decision. Although it's very unlikely as I'm not too interested. Not against it or anything. Uh, some interesting stuff there, but it's not for me, at least in so far as Roger Hallam and video games are involved. Neither of which I'm very enthusiastic about. But after that, he says, if you want to help me with my work, that's another matter. Ultimately, as I said, I need money from thousands to millions of pounds to stop stupid wage work. Uh, which drastically reduces my output, to make a radio show, to publicize my writings, to make a film, to make a documentary, to make television series, and so on. So, uh, I mean, I won't read the whole email, but you I, I mean, I, I, I'm, <laughs> you know, that's what we are, that's what we're going to face. So, I mean, I'm not, how am I going to come up to him and say, oh, Darren, we've seen the light. You, you really, you really have inspired us. We want to follow your lead and, and we're ready to back you up. But what am I going? He's going to be very specific, and I, I'm not equipped to answer all these questions. Ah, uh -huh, no. So what we can offer is that we can get him money. So we can we can work to get him funding. So the the way I think, and I'm quite serious about this. I mean, he's doing exactly the kind of work you would do for an art. It's just yes. <laughs> his his. Um, you know, director's authority over it, or whatever you call it. Yeah, yeah, um, I've seen but, the blog. It's full of stuff that's interesting for the ARG, comic strips, uh, different uh, posters, uh, uh, critics of documentaries, uh, projects. He's got an awful lot of stuff going, so he, he is working hard, like, he's got, and exactly in our line. I mean, there's a few divergences, but, you know, he's, uh, yeah. So, yeah, so... I, he says he's struggling to get the money, and I'm not bloody surprised. But the the way to do it and the way to get him his money and get his art projects going is, uh, I think, with the, the currency in the game. So, you know, the, the play and all of that stuff and the stuff I'm going to discuss next week, the, it, the funding is uh, the important part. But, you know, if uh, rather than have him work as a wage slave, to do his art, uh, you know, but hopefully we can get him interested in saying, you know, you, you have to do a bit of a work a day um, with the the play and the tease and the arg and the, the project. And uh, so to get it off the ground so it can generate the money not only for you to do your stuff, but loads of other people, you know, don't have to mention Jeff and stuff, but I mean, you see, I think if we can reach a critical mass and uh, we we can get loads of people off the ground, we can get a whole community living. It's, it really is the parallel polis or transition town or something. It's the art version. So everybody does the permaculture version, but this is the art and resistance version. And so, you know, the, the, my dream is that the game and the play is monetized enough to support uh, you know, organic growth and 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 support all these people in their work. So if if we can get air so so if we can get airborne, you know, um, not only him but but hosts of other people can also be supported. I mean, and everybody on this call is, ba is basically the, the, the defeat of capitalism is to actually use capitalism to undermine it. So, the, or, you know, it's very common for the left to get, you know, all snotty about, you know, all capitalism and money and stuff and say, like, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. You've got to use Roman tactics to defeat Rome. So stop all this, you know, moralizing and, oh, you use a computer, yeah, you're not exactly t Uncle Ted. You know, like, fuck you, man. We're in the fucking prison complex. We all have to eat the prison food. And we can use anything in the prison to bring down the prison. 
So yeah, you got to use all of this stuff and you know make a currency, monetize it. This is this you know this is the best and sweetest way I can think of monetizing the game as painlessly as possible, so that people don't think it's all about the money. But if if this works, then all of us, everybody involved in the game, you know, it's it has the elements of multi-level marketing and stuff like that, and so. You know, we should use it because capitalism itself is just a giant Ponzi scheme. So there's no ethical way to use money. Money. So money itself is is the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil, and and so in a normal cult. What happens is, like Rainier's cult or one of these guys, is is it really tests the cult leader because they get power and power corrupts. And so what it turns into is basically money and sex. It basically it's becomes reptilian brain. So the, one of the reasons why I'm quite enamored of Faulty is because I really think he, he has the character to not be seduced by that. He's not the normal run-of-the-mill asshole. But now I tell you, those stack up, man. They stack up in heaps. But I think he has the bigger vision that we're not going to sell out for fucking pennies. We're going to basically go the whole hog and you know take down the system. So the, the way to do it is you, you have to basically accept some compromises. So one of the compromises is, is the slaves in this plantation have been indoctrinated and domesticated and they've had their heads filled in with concrete. You can't just wish that away. You have to meet the slave on his own terms. And he has terms, he's been told, he's been indoctrinated, his whole life is about money and the pursuit of a dollar. So you, you can't wish that away. You have to work with that. And the whole system needs money. So, you know, basically, yeah, the reason why somebody like Darren will never get off the ground is because he'll never generate enough money to do his save the world, you know, cause a sui immortality project. And uh, because he's, he's working too hard for Jeff Bezos. And so, you see, that was the other thing I said about, you know, if Leonardo da Vinci existed today, if Bach existed today, you wouldn't hear about him because he'd be working in a fucking distribution center in Amazon. Of course he would. You know, Leonardo da Vinci would be on probably in a straitjacket. Bach would be on Ritalin. Mozart would be a fucking vegetable. They, they would have put him on so much fucking Ritalin during his youth, he wouldn't have been able to speak straight. Slave world. Up is down and back is front. It's basically fair is foul and foul is fair. And so you have to compromise and start from that. So these guys understand money. Their noses are, are cued to money. And they basically, they want to know, oh, is this all a big scam to get my money? And so you have to work with that. And you have to work with the fact that to, to run anything in this world, you need money. So you, you're going to need some seed capital and stuff. But you saw... Well, when I was talking to Darren about money and putting figures on it, it's chicken feed. The English English guys think 120k is a lot of money. It's fuck all. In Hollywood, they don't they don't know what a check under 10 million is. So it, Jeff spent two million of his own money on the institute, <laughs> right? It's basically, you know, th that's considered chump change. And then he spent another four million on on the um in bright axiom but you, I, I tell you he didn't need to spend that because you you can do these things on a shoestring but but it, you know you run it like a startup and the the normal startup works because you give people equity and then it's pie in the sky for later and so that's how the capitalist system works, and that's why the planet is fucked, and that's why we're all going to die. 
but you can't wish that away. You have to say, well, that's how these fuckers think. And, you know, you can't undo like 20 years, 25 years of indoctrination. You can't undo it in a day. So you have to start with that premise and then we work from there. But, you know, we're going to need some money. And, I, you know, I think if, if we get to Hollywood and get a few celebs on board and stuff, you know, you know, the, the money will come easily. It'll come in droves as long as we've got a story. We've got a narrative. We've got a plan. We've got something new, right? Uh, so, I think people people love it. So you are going to see Faulty on Wednesday, and um, you're going to spend a few days with him, and you're going to you're going to talk to him about all this, I suppose, and. Um, is there any stage where you're over there, you want to make a, a call with us, or do you want to stay just tete-a-tete, uh, -tete, or what's the story? I, I, I would like you involved. Um, I would like to conference people in as, as much as possible and see how the sausage is made. Um, I've got kind of two tasks. So, you know, Ryan mentioned about the, the what and the how, and so I, you know, the mistake I made seriously with Darren is jumping into the, the how. And <laughs> that's, uh, the problem is, as I say, I'm too close to this project and I'm I really. So the problem is, I'm too close to this project. And so I dive into the how really easy. The thing is, Faulty does too. So it's fine. I mean, I've, I've been on calls recently where. You're just geeking out on the how because that's his thing. He's practical and basically he's really thrilled because because I have the answers to the how. But it doesn't work with the, somebody that wants you know director's authority or artistic uh, final say or something. So so but now I've got a dual task because there's faulty and there's um I don't know what to call it. <laughs> I can't think of a name on the top of my head. But Blondie. Blondie. So, yeah, so we got Faulty and Blondie. So, yeah, uh, so Dagwood Wise Blondie uh, is, um, so we got Faulty and Blondie. So, so Blondie uh, is, is a different kettle of fish. I've actually got to start with, as Ryan advises, which is, uh, much more into why, why when, um, you know, what, and uh, not so much uh, the what and the how. So I got to, I got to discipline myself there and and make sure I come in on the, particularly the the when. You know, the timeline is so important. A lot of the stuff we're doing, a lot of the plans and stuff we have, they all fall flat on their face depending on how much time we have. So. And I mean, uh, how much time we have before the bell strike. So in other words, you know, how much time we've got until we, we need to start deep adaptation or the, you know, the whole idea of, of this kind of thing is, is, is passe and you know, we've got to start localizing and transition to permaculture and stuff. But the, you know, starting mutual support at a local level and stuff, which I think is where, if it all works, that's where we should get to. But in, in the meantime, uh, it, it's very different tactics if we've got 10 years or 20 years. So you have to go with what people believe in. So, but, you know, you can't do MLK and Gandhi and stuff. You need 90 years. The ANC started in 1901. It took them until 1994 to get to power. So, you know, the thought of actually, you know, doing, repeating what the ANC did is just fucking nuts. It just doesn't even bear thinking about. But what, what you can do is a psyops. The people who started with, you know, Quebec name, you know, Quebec Alpha November Oscar November crowd, is that, that crowd showed that in two years with 14 million, you can do the nasty. And uh, so, so with a, a psyop, you can do something in short order. But in you know these long-winded, non-violent uh, protest and NVDA, you're going to do fuck all. You're going to waste your you know, the years that we have left. So, so anyway.
Well, I have to prove that. I think I have to start with, the, you know, lightly and not do a Darren with, um, with Blondie. Um, um, yeah, because uh, I could make a huge fuck up by making an enemy of her and I I could do that easily, you know, just by stepping on a landmine. So that's that's the strategy. But I, I'm 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 going to try to get you uh, in um, as much as possible. And uh, you know, there's Wi-Fi and stuff. So yeah. This is a. I do have a question for clarity. Is the assignment for uh, Risa and me, Spencer? No, the whole of that crowd. Uh, so Spencer, Jordy Aitken, and and Jeff Hull, and and my ambition is to get to Jeff Hull to get get him on board, because you know, well, you know, essentially because I got my the inspiration for this from his work. So I'm biased towards it. Um, I can be talked out of it if uh, if people don't like the the. Shui or that I can be talked out of it. But well, I was just um, wondering because um, with Darren, he has his specific projects that he wants funding, for which he wants funding. But with with Jeff, what is it that we could do for him since he's already famous and out there? Or is that something that we will need to discover? No, well, you might need to discover it, but in my mind, I I think I offer him the pieces that he hasn't got yet. So we we complementary. That I tried to get that point across to Jordy and failed. So you see, I've got you see, I saw all of their work and the, all of their stuff so far has failed. So, but but I came for, as an outsider looking at it to see what they went wrong. And, and so I worked from the point of fixing it. And so one of the things is financing. So I think I, they stumbled on how to, how to monetize it and keep, keep a, where do you get the money from? So it is financial too. So Yeah, so, so Jeff Hull is an independently wealthy guy. And so, so the problem with a guy like that is he's surrounded all the time by people that want his money. So, but, but you know, I don't want a cent of his money. He's already hemorrhaged so much fucking money. You just can't expect him to do any more. So, I, I, you know, the key thing is to explain him. We're not after your money. I understand exactly why it fell down because of the money. And I have the solution. So I, I feel like on all the bits that they fucked up on, that 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 I have uh, I've figured out the the solution for them, and so the the it's mainly monetizing it. So it's basically it, I would be very happy if Jeff did Jeff, and and basically then you know I provided the geodo and the money you know the in-game currency and basically uh, that generated enough to to support their work, but you see. They're missing one other piece that they don't realize, and that's um, they don't understand cults. And so, so you know, um, Jeff uh, Jeff's on tape saying, you know, it's it's not a cult. You know, we went, we put in guardrails and did special stuff to make sure that it wasn't a cult. And it was like, you know, what these guys have to understand is you cannot make it not a cult. It's basically the people want it to be a cult. What, you see, what, the, one of the reasons why Jeff failed, and I don't think he knows this, is because he wouldn't step up to be the... You see, I think one of the things where, where Jeff failed, and he doesn't know this, is he didn't... Destiny, you... you what he's doing is a cult in a cult leader. So he, if he doesn't fulfill the role of a cult leader, 
he's going to piss off the audience. The, the members themselves are going to turn on him and get antagonistic because he's not fulfilling the, 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 the role as it's advertised in, you know, by um, unwritten contract. So by just, just, uh, just the, the, this role is a deep psychological role. And, and so it, if you step up to it, the people have deep, 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 I mean, spinal cord, deep expectations of what this role is all about. And, and so you're gonna, it's gonna confuse you like fuck if you like, you know, if you don't know this territory and know what you're in. But you see guys like me and Lionel know all this territory just fucking well. So, so, but anyway, we, But anyway, I see it as entirely complementary with the slight difficulty that they don't know their deficits. They only know the one, and that's the monetary thing. Does that help? Yes, and I think I'll spend time um, watching their movies and um, just um, all the uh, videos that you've linked, that we have linked in the subreddit. Um, and also, of course, communicating with Mike and Risa, and maybe after your faulty um, event, um, we could. Uh, I I would I might have more questions on how to approach. Um, yeah, and you them. see, a, a, you were not there, I think, at the meeting with Jordi, but we wh where we failed also is that he he was looking. F uh, he was also looking. He was looking for finance. I think in his position as the um, um, artistic director. I think he was, I think he would have been probably lured if there had been something mentioned that way. I think he he's not in the same league as Jeff, you see. He did, he did explicitly say that, you know, uh, he dropped it in rather subtly, but he definitely dropped in there like, well, it'd be different if it was like a paid consultancy. <laughs> so, you know, if I was paid by the hour, I'd do it. Um, so, yeah. That, that is one of the draws. But anyway, lean on me heavily, uh, you know, to explain any of that stuff. Okay. I must admit. Yes. It, it... So, yeah, I must admit, it's not easy to, to grok it, but... In my experience, there's a definite moment when you, you look at the stuff and think about it and stuff, and then there's a definite moment where the penny drops and you suddenly get it. And it's it's quite a gut punch when you realize what they're doing. Yeah, and no, I would I would I would go with my intuition a lot with these guys, and uh, that's what I did with Darren for to get him to get him in. And I I'll send you any when I'm I'm going to keep a correspondence with him, and I'll send you what I'm sending him so we can you know. Um, consult with each other on that. Yes, and if you don't mind, um, you know, we'll we'll for sure reach out to uh, to you, Sophie, to Hugh, Gary, whoever might have um, insight because you have dealt with them um, in in these meetings. Yeah, uh, okay. yeah. One of the things one of the things I intend to do is to raise this as a problem area with faulty and so and i i think that there might be another lure so there's another bit of bait and and what these other guys what these guys will also go for is uh, celebrity pulling power so if, if if you basically the in crowd they really really want to be on the in crowd so there's a point where everybody wants to get on the bandwagon because they realize this is a, a happening project. This is the way it works in Hollywood. So they have Hollywood instincts. You can see all of them have Hollywood instincts. And they, you see, what happens is everything, you know, there are millions and millions of plans in Hollywood that are just going fucking nowhere. Um, but you, if you get a certain... But if you get a certain kind of celeb or heavy hitter or known 
uh, known name, uh, then then suddenly that uh, makes a critical mass, and then everybody knows, ooh, that's the happening party, and they all want to be in, on the in crowd with the cool kids. And so I think that Faulty might have enough celebrity clout and pulling power to to bring on one of those one or two of those, especially from the UK, and then. If you can bring one of those um, those celebs on board, then everything just you know it's a hot knife through butter. After that, everything goes easy. So that's that's another avenue. So I'll try that one and see see what what uh, Faulty says. Okay, have we covered everything? I think so. For now, good luck. Yeah, it's it's fun as hell, guys. I really hope you're having fun because <laughs> this is uh, this is supposed to be fun. <laughs> it is. It is fun and, indeed. Yeah. It's educational okay, so, for sure. <laughs> oh, that's too harsh. It's, <laughs> we, if it's not fun, we better make it fun. But um, yeah, it. Jordi, Jordi mentioned that uh, make it fun and light, and and that is a prerequisite. But yeah, so all right, I'm um, okay. So hey, can we just just pause and just um, go out on just silence and a dedication so that we don't. So we go out with a, a dedication, and then we don't take this personally. We don't. Give up all our angst about it. We, all our motivations, our thoughts, our feelings, all our investment in it. We just like give it away to the universe and just remind ourselves why we're doing this. We're doing this for the earth, and we're doing this for the Parama Atman, the Supreme Atman, the Supreme Self of everything which we are. So, for still, let out a deep breath. Let go. All thoughts, feelings, imaginings, desires, aversions. Get in contact with your senses. Look behind your eyelids. Feel your weight on the chair. Notice your breath without changing it. Listen to the furthest sound. And now connect with the peace beyond that, the ineffable or other ineffable peace, the peace that passes all understanding. Take rest in it. And now we give it all up, saying, Om Param Atmane Ma Iti. Yeah, wow, thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Yes. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> thank a few you. edits and yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh,